Hey folks, uh, Stephen from LRJ here with another project car update. This is the Project 427Z. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about what we're doing with the fuel system on this car in order to support the 600-625 wheel horsepower that this uh, LS7 engine should make naturally aspirated. Uh, what we're doing is a comprehensive fuel system upgrade, but we're still keeping it simple, not making it more complicated than it needs to be. So this car will retain a returnless style setup. Uh, we're going to run a new Dash 6 AN hardline from the fuel tank to the engine bay, and we're going to do a billet fuel rail setup, uh, much like what was done on the Project Carl Marrow on this car. But um, some things need to be a little different on this car because of the LS7 intake manifold's differences to the LS1 slash 6 manifold that's on that car, as well as um, the injector type that's on this car. This car is running stock uh, LS7 EV6 short body injectors. So what happens because the um, EV6 short body injector is so short, uh, this intake manifold again was designed to run a factory style fuel rail with a crossover, but that fuel rail is a very thin body and it has bosses coming off the bottom that kind of are standoffs to extend the height of the injectors. So when you try to drop a billet style fuel rail all the way down onto the injector body, these casting protrusions on the side of the intake manifold interfere with the back side of the fuel rail. So there's two ways around that. Machine the back of the fuel rail like we did on the um, Carl Marrow in the offending areas to get the clearance we need, um, or space up the fuel rail and put a spacer on top of the injector. Uh, because there's so much more interference with trying to lower the fuel rail low enough for these short body injectors, uh, we elected to do the latter, um, buy, buy spacers and place those on top of the injectors to space up the fuel rail, uh, giving us the clearance we need to run these rails on this car. I'll uh, be doing the same welded AN fittings and crossover tube on this intake to really clean up the look. Uh, the fuel pressure regulator and filter will be mounted in the back of the car by the fuel tank to keep that out of the engine bay and simplify things. We'll set it to the stock fuel pressure 58 PSI to make tuning easy. Uh, this car is running a Nick Williams 102 uh, millimeter electronic driver wire throttle body. And uh, that pretty much wraps up the fuel system on this car. Uh, the only other work going on right now on this car is the ignition system, but because this has custom valve covers, uh, powder coated and etched by LOJ, um, they require the relocation of the coil packs. So the coil packs need to be re relocated somewhere else in the engine bay, and a 300ZX is pretty tight. Uh, Width-wise, there isn't a lot of room down low on the fuel rail, or on the frame rails, because of the alternator on this side and the AC compressor on that side. This car is retaining factory AC. So uh, some of the ideas we had was mounting the coils down under the battery tray on this side and under the uh, clutch master cylinder on that side, or mounting them up under the wheel well where the factory air injection valves were located on these cars. Uh, that I, I want to steer away from simply because from a maintenance perspective, it's a lot harder to access down there. Uh, but that's some of what's going on with this car right now. Definitely stay tuned for more updates. There's a lot more info to share about this car. Um, and a lot more fun things coming along. So thanks, guys.